Well, what if it was your child? That's God's choice. If he takes, if I have a child and he takes him from me, then That's I know okay. where my child is. Well, you hope you hope your child's there. You don't know. Well, for me, I know it to be fact. Okay. Again, I can't prove it to anybody else, but my faith goes as deep as it is a fact to me. Okay. All right. Well, we got an off topic. Okay. Okay. I had mentioned Eve eating from a tree that she didn't have any knowledge of, and God intentionally put the serpent in the garden to deceive Eve, knowing for a fact that Eve was going to fall. Therefore, creating, therefore, having to create something called original sin, which means that he created a place called hell for those of us that would fall away or be born with sin. It's a setup, in my opinion. That's wrong, in my opinion. Well... The whole purpose for everything, it goes back to the free will choice of choosing him. That's that's the basis for everything. And if you reject that, then everything falls apart. What does what does choosing him mean? Right. How do we choose him? It starts with faith. You accept the Bible as the word of God and you go that way. Why is faith a good thing? Where do I get faith? Yeah. I don't see why faith is a good thing. It's a choice. You choose to believe something I don't without okay. having sight on it. I don't choose to uh, believe anything. Okay, wait, wait. You think belief, well, that's your choice. Wait, you think belief I, is a I choice? I believe belief is absolutely a choice. Okay, so you could go in. So I take you and I take you into my kitchen, and I turn on my burner, and I tell you when you believe that that burner's room temperature. Stick your hand to it. Could you do it? I think I could. Really? So you think you could believe that a hot burner is room temperature and stick your hand to it? As long as in the first one to four seconds? No, maybe. no, no. I said a hot, <laughs> I, I said a red hot burner. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. My brain skipped that part. A um, red case, hot no. burner. So belief is not a choice because well, you couldn't and believe. in that scenario, I know better. Yeah, I and believe that's, that you're that's wrong what, before you say but it. But my point is yeah. belief is not a choice. You can't believe that a building's four inches tall when you're standing on top of a 10-story building and then oh. jump. It, only whenever you already know the difference. When you don't know the difference, that's, that's, that, that does not apply. A but child knowledge, will put his hand on a red hot burner, not knowing it's hot because he hasn't learned that yet. It's the knowledge that helped that reinforces. Okay, the so, at, no, so no, 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 knowledge is a subset of belief. If I know something, then I believe it to be true. Yes. Right. So I don't choose to believe things. I, I, I am. Through no fault of my own, I am convinced of the world around me and everything that I see that's evidence I take in, and that alters my brain state such that I accept that it's true. That's not a choice. Okay. You- mm. It's a mm. – I don't know. I guess I'm, it's, I am either a little con- philosophical on me there. I am either con- <laughs> I am either convinced that it's true or it's not true. Yes, but, but I there no, are not always I, things seen that determine that. Okay, right. But I'm not. I'm saying I am either convinced of that or I'm not. And you know, in the face of evidence, I believe whatever I believe, and I don't choose either way. Okay, now, fact, now, Morgan said it perfectly. Facts do not change because you do not or do believe in them. The fact, the fact doesn't change simply because you believe or don't believe. That would really depend on what it was you were referring to. You need to be a little more specific okay. on it. Like, give me a signal. Okay. Does a fact change based on how you perceive the fact? No. It's like I heard someone say, science doesn't say anything whatsoever. That's a lie. Scientists say everything about science science only presents things but science itself isn't saying anything man takes the science and draws his own conclusions from it well i'll i'll say let's say okay for one i'll i'll agree with you in a sense because science is more of a methodology but i'll just say that the findings that science has found that science itself doesn't say anything but but that's interpreted by the scientist sure yeah i'll accept that Okay. All right. All right. Eve did not know the difference between right and wrong. So a serpent talked to her and she ate from the tree. You said that a baby would stick its hands on a hot burner because he didn't know that that burner was hot and a baby would get burnt. Yes. Right. Isn't that, mm-hmm. isn't that the exact same thing as Eve? 
Eve ate from the tree because she didn't know that, that it was wrong? I, I, I have to say no, because in the Bible it says that Eve was deceived. If it but had not God said she was deceiver. deceived, then I have to go with it. Maybe she didn't know, but she was deceived, which means she had to know or be talked into it. Now, Lee, God put the deceiver in the garden. Yes. Intentionally. Yes. To deceive Eve. I don't. I would not say that was the sole purpose. What other? Which is, what other person? What? What? What other? No, no, no. What other purpose does a deceiver serve? Other, other than to deceive. Well, at that point, he was just a fallen angel. He wasn't necessarily. I mean, yes, he was evil. He was deceptive and everything else like that. But that, his sole existence was not to deceive. Really? What so when was you it? say he put the deceiver there, that suggests that that was his only reason for existing so, was to deceive her. That wasn't his reason for existing. Okay, so he was what, angel of light before that. So. No, we're not talking about an angel of light that did it. We're talking about a deceiver that did it. It's the same It's the I, same thing. It's the I, same being. I know very much. Now, we don't know that in the book of Genesis. We don't learn that till much later in the Bible when you talk about the fallen angel. But a person reading the Bible for the first time will not know about a fallen angel in, in Genesis. Okay? No, they wouldn't. Will not. Thank so, you, because so, I'm reading the Bible for the right. first time. and I. But growing up. Satan didn't come about until later in the Bible. Right. So how can the serpent be Satan? I understand your question. Well. Now, my point is I understand that is that you see it as a deceiver. I understand that. But we cannot look at Genesis and know that the deceiver is a fallen angel. That's much later in the Bible. True, but that's why you have the entire Bible. You can't just take right, but, uh, one one verse at the beginning or at the end and Lee, stand on that one thing alone. You have to apply the whole thing. Buddy, I am. If I'm, but I can't read the whole thing at no, the no, same time. If I'm sitting in a hotel and I saw a Bible for the very first time and I'm reading this, do you think I'm going to read seven, seven books later before I realize what's happening in Genesis? Or am I going to read it at face value? Initially, you'll read it at face value. Okay, so my question is the deceivers in the garden intentionally placed there by God intentionally placed there to deceive Eve. That is the reason he's there. Nowhere in the Bible does it say anything other than that. He's there to deceive her so that she would eat, eat from the fruit. Well, the Bible and, doesn't say that he was put there for the purpose of deception. That is a presupposition that is added later. Okay. Lee, we can dance around this all night, brother. I, I, I really don't mind, okay, because I'm, I'm enjoying the conversation. And we can. We can do this. As a matter of fact, we'll do three more hours of after show if you want. Okay. My point is. I won't. My, my, point, <laughs> my point is the serpent is there to deceive. Did, did he not deceive? That is what he that did. That is what he did. not why he okay. was there. But how would Eve know that she's being deceived? She didn't know. She didn't, and but yet she's being punished. For something she didn't know. And all women, I'm, I'm being punished. Yeah, with, supposedly, with birth pains. For something that another person did. That part is true. Now, because right. God I'm loves you not enough to give you pain. That Eve did not. I'm not saying she knew she was being deceived. She didn't know she was being deceived. I'm not claiming anything other, other to the contrary of that. All I'm saying is she knew she wasn't supposed to eat the fruit. Once again, we're kicking this dead horse. I okay, know. but once again, <sighs> really, I, we and, are. And I know, and I'm just going to say it. But Logic no, is not in this but, conversation. But nowhere apparently. in the Bible, in the beginning, does it state that Eve knew Adam was off someplace else, probably making other babies, or I, I don't know, or or whatever. But Adam was not, did not tell Eve, "Listen, honey, you cannot eat from that tree because then you're gonna know the difference between good and evil." He did not tell her that. But we don't know what he told her. So basically, your beliefs are on assumptions, or most Christians' beliefs are on assumptions. No, I think it says she was deceived, so that kind of answers the question to me. By a serpent that God put there. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, look, wh whether you want to believe it or not or agree, that's true, okay? But I'm done kicking this dead horse. <laughs> okay. okay. Now, we now are a fallen world because yes. Eve ate the fruit. Okay, the fact that I am born makes me a sinner, right? Correct. Now, did the Bible say that we are not to pay for the sins of our fathers? No, actually, it says the it opposite. Doesn't? That the really? sins of the father will follow the son of the next generation and the next generation. Really? Are you sure? Yes, I'm positive. 
So there's nowhere in the Bible that it says that a child will not, it shall not pay for the sins of their father. Okay. The distinction here is saying that if the father commits a murder, the child is not responsible for it. But if there are certain so why are we things like we've generational some, curses. But why are we responsible for something Eve did, or supposedly did? We don't know if she did or not. It, it, to me, well, it's just allegory. Okay? It's metaphor. It, it, to me, it's not even fact. Well, as far as the birth pangs was the curse that the woman received. Right, because God, loves, the only loves, one you, the woman received. God loves you so much, Ashley, that he gave you birth pains because she ate a piece of fruit. Well, it was a matter of, it was, it was a matter of discipline. And for doing, yes, I understand that it affected everybody. And as far as why God had it follow the next the pre, the following generations, I don't, I don't, I don't know why He did it that way. That's it, I don't, I don't know why He did. I had to speak for Him in order to make an assertion there, and an assertion is all it would be. I don't have, I don't actually have any evidence to back up why He did it that way. Hmm. So I'm, so I'm born with this debt that I, that I did nothing to deserve right yeah all i did was got born yeah okay how is so, that fair oh no no hang on it's not fair okay but that means if i was never born i would not have that debt correct correct why are you against abortion because it's a life I believe it's a life upon conce- conception, and it has a soul. Right. So when that baby's born, they're born into e- eternal sin and a chance of going to hell. But if the baby's never born, they're automatically with Jesus, right? Correct. So why are you against abortion? Because if God saw fit to give that child life, then who am I to disagree with that choice? But who are you to say what a woman can and cannot do with her body? I don't have any right to say what a woman can or cannot do with no. her body. But I also don't believe abortion to be a matter of a choice. As far as wait. a woman's right to do something or not to do something. So wait, hold on. Uh, let's let's look at the consequences of what might happen. So if I if I kill a baby, then it will be guaranteed to go to heaven. Yes. Okay. So, but I will go to hell probably as a result of that. Just if you're unrepentant, maybe, yes. Uh, sure. I'll I'll just I'll just say I'll go to hell based on the results of that. However, if I let it live, then there's the possibility that it becomes an atheist and then it goes to hell as a result of that. <laughs> I wouldn't call it – I'd rather call it an atheist because that almost seems biased against you guys. But well, no, no, that's it's fine. Okay. If it doesn't come to, to a belief in Christ, no, yes. No, I, I am willing to make your assumption that atheists go to hell, you know, just for the sake of this position. So – I, I didn't wouldn't, say that. Uh, no, well – Okay, there is the possibility that when the kid grows up, it has the possibility to change its life such that it will go to hell when it mm-hmm. dies. Yeah. So, if I if I kill the baby and guarantee it's going to hell and sacrifice myself and send myself to hell for eternity as a result of that, that's a larger sacrifice than Jesus because I'm guaranteeing myself going to hell. Uh, just to make sure this kid goes doesn't go to hell because oh, Jesus was only, Jesus was only there for a couple of days. He was there for a week. <clears throat> yes, but he died for all humanity that okay. has ever existed before and after. Okay. Right, but I'm making a bigger sacrifice for this baby I love. Lord, no, he did it for billions. You only did it for one. There's right, no but I'm, I'm I'm talking about one kid, and he did billions. Right, but I don't care about the rest of the billions. I'm making a sacrifice, and I'm getting tortured for eternity. Yeah, if you killed a baby, yeah. yeah that blood so, is on your hands. Right, but but I did the moral thing because I guaranteed that it was going to heaven. It's not the moral I, thing, though. And Jesus didn't even guarantee that anybody was going to heaven. He didn't do that at all, but I'm guaranteeing that this baby goes to heaven by killing it. So it's, hang on, so it's, so it's relative, no. Right. So Jesus, no. Jesus. Well, based on it's well, based relative. On, based on Jeremiah's opinion, he's thinking that he's doing the baby a favor, and that's not the case. Okay. Yes, if you kill the baby, the baby goes to heaven for sure. But that still yes. means you had to take the baby. They had to take that child's sin on yourself. That's not your place to do. If God well, gave the child life, He meant for the child to live, at least to a degree. Right. Okay. But I am I am giving the baby eternal paradise. That's a pretty damn good gift. 
Well, I wouldn't. I don't think you'd do that. So, I mean, I don't think anyone has ever killed a child because they ascended to heaven. I don't think there's oh, one human. No. In